Hi, and truth by grace, it is Never Lose Truth, Carol. Okay, um, your question to me in this video that you posted, as I said in the email, I am going to do my best. I do want to say I am really tired and I am going to be honest as you were in your video. Um, I do want to preface this by saying, and I've said this in other videos, that I have a lot of respect for you. I do not share your beliefs. So, I also want to say that I read some of the comments underneath your video. I was not at all surprised to see uh, the Carol hates Christians or I unsubscribed. I didn't want to be insulted every day um, and very sad to see that she will suffer the consequences of the tribulation and I guess won't be going to heaven. Look, um, I understand that you know, I, seven years of being inundated with comments from Christians who hear what they want to hear, not what is being said. And when people do have these hardened beliefs, they do everything to maintain that belief. An awful lot of people, if ever challenged, if their beliefs are challenged, they become hostile, they attack. I have for years been saying, I do not hate Christians at all. I hate the hypocrisy that I see within the Christian community. People then take that personally. Why? My, the only answer that I can come up with is that they're one of the Christian uh, hypocrites. There are an awful lot of Christians who recognize the hypocrisy within the Christian community. It, it, this is not just an idea that I have. Um, it, in fact, is becoming more and more clear. So, I just want to say, whoever is going to be leaving comments, go for it. I understand you have your belief and you've got your filters in your own head. You're going to hear what you want to hear. And the first thing that I'm going to say is belief is not truth. It's a belief. It's not a fact. It's not truth. you this idea that Christians own the truth now I saw a comment how I'm never going to get to the truth and something about my titling my um, or my naming my channel never lose truth um, she thinks that she has the truth the arrogance is so thick but of course it has to be because you've got to maintain that belief, your belief that it is truth when everyone knows the big questions cannot be answered. But the Christians, you have the answer. You have truth. And if someone doesn't share your beliefs, they're lost. Puppies out out to sea, they need to be saved, you know, this this really creates an awful lot of problems. And, you know, at this point, uh, well, it's just going to continue until those individuals face their own self. Most people don't want to do that, so if you don't do that, I'd say that you're the lost puppy.
out at sea. So your question to me in Truth by Grace was, who gives me the authority to determine what is age appropriate? Because according to you, I do not have the authority on my own. Your question presupposes that one needs an external authority to determine for them what is appropriate, what is right from wrong, and once they get it from an external authority, what? They can then speak on matters of age appropriateness? Considering your question, I don't think it wrong to say that you believe no one has the authority to determine for themselves what is age appropriate for children, insinuating that if someone does determine for themselves what is right or wrong, perhaps they're determining subjective standards of appropriateness. Um, I, I'm a little baffled by the question itself. So, are you saying that the only place that one can go to get standards of age appropriateness is in the Bible? Because I don't think and tell me if I'm wrong, that there's a passage in the Bible that says, um, Hear unto me, there shall be no drag queen time, uh, story times for children. Uh, it is age uh, inappropriate. I don't think it's in there. So, um, how did you get to that same end point that we both got to? because you agree with me. You're, you share the same outrage. So we got to the same moral endpoint. I just got there differently and you're now objecting to me getting there differently? Okay. Um, Is it that I said, I am not a Christian. I don't put labels on myself. Is it that that you object to? And if somebody says that they're not a Christian, then they don't have a right to speak on matters of uh, appropriateness because because they don't have the authority, which according to you, only comes from the God of the Bible, the biblical God, your God, only your God. If I was a Christian, I would then have that authority, because according to you, the only authority on moral standards is the biblical God. So if I were a Christian, you would then assume I got the age-appropriate standards from the Bible and then you would never have posted a video asking me where I got my authority from. It does seem odd that we did get, we arrived at the same moral endpoint, but because we took different paths, then I guess I don't have the authority to speak. It's only Christians who can speak on morality, age appropriateness. I'm, I'm a little, is that what you're saying? Because that's really, well, kind of fascist, isn't it? Um, or are you saying that I could not have arrived at the same endpoint as you without that biblical 
God's standards of morality, that somehow they were filtered into me um, from that God. All right, so if I understand the question correctly, you're saying I have no right to speak on matters of morality because I'm not a Christian, because that authority comes from the Christian God of the Bible. Um, so what you're saying is no one has the right but Christians. You also say that you don't have the authority um, you also stated that you don't have the right to impose uh, standards of age appropriateness on anyone as I don't have the right. Okay, so who gets, are we to remain silent then? And in order to understand these standards, everyone's got to go to your Bible. You know, given that we arrived at the same endpoint of appropriateness, you state your agreement and share my outrage. I think your objection is precisely because I stated I am not Christian, no labels do I put on myself. So your argument, is it really about age appropriateness or uh, morality? Or is it about anyone speaking these standards that you say only come from your God? And I think your argument is less to do with age appropriateness and more to do with morality in general, perhaps the immorality of homosexuals and drag queens in general. But I'm going to go with your question, who gives me the authority to determine what is appropriate and what is inappropriate for children? It's common knowledge. We have known for a very, very long time uh, children are to be spared from uh, having to deal with adult matters, adult activities. Um, it's why we don't allow children to drink alcohol, smoke cigarettes. Uh, it's why we don't introduce sex to children or sexuality. Uh, why we don't bring them to adult movies. We have ratings you know, the R rating, you don't bring to a, chi uh, bring a child to see. Um, we don't bring them to bars. We, uh, we don't bring them to drag queen shows in bars. Uh, we all know. It's just, it's common sense. Children do not have the psychological nor the cognitive capacity to process adult information or adult experiences. It, it, we know that that would cause psychological harm. So we don't have to go to the Bible to understand that. Um, innocence of children, that it needs to be protected and they shouldn't have that robbed from them. Introducing adult matters, material, conversation, serious conversation, serious matters discussed between adults. No, the children should be spared all of that. So, uh, you know, your question strikes me as odd and it's a little hard to uh, answer what is very obvious. It's common sense. Um, and if one needs a Bible to tell them what is necessary to protect children and to not introduce them to activities that could cause psychological damage, then, oh, well, 
I think that that individual is psychologically damaged and cognitively damaged. I get my authority from me. Oh, I know. Oh, sacrilege. That means you're a narcissist. That means you're a Satanist. That means you're... No, no. It uh, means that there are objective standards. So these are not subjective standards that I am imposing on anyone. They're objective standards. There are objective standards of right and wrong. Objective standards of morality. So, yeah, there has been an intuitive sense of what is right and wrong within me. I've also learned through life experience, having spent long periods of self-reflection, uh, rather deep introspection, examining my own behaviors. Um, but, but your question is regarding what's age appropriate for children. Um, well, it's, it's simple. Um, it doesn't take much thought to realize, nor does it take experience of being a child who has been abused to understand what abuse is. So we're seriously um, starting from a really bad place if we have to learn age appropriateness. And apparently, according to you, that can only be from your God. You believe men are inherently evil? I don't believe that. But because of your belief, I guess you believe that an external authority that dictates moral standards is necessary to curb the evil. If someone needs an external authority to curb their evil, they are not a well-developed human being. They are a very sick human being. This um, this idea, you know, that it's the biblical God that has laid out these moral standards that are the standards for proper living, that one could not possibly know that without the biblical God is a very frightening idea because what you are suggesting is that there's an awful lot of people who have who have not even the cognitive ability of, I don't know, an eight-year-old child. But when you say that the only authority of moral standards is the biblical God, how has that worked out for you? How has that worked out for Christians? Something has gone wrong, big time. You speak of the founders establishing a country based on Christian concepts. You acknowledge that there's evidence of Ben Franklin being a Satanist, and then you say, nonetheless, 
the whole reason this country worked, the way it worked, was because everyone went along with the moral standards set out in the Bible. Are you? Okay. See, the problem with cemented belief, you cannot even face the obvious because the obvious then becomes a challenge to that belief. The moral standards, they all went along with that. At the time of this country, its founding, all right, everybody identified as Christian, but for a few thousand, maybe two thousand Jews. And of the Christians, everyone was Protestant except for a very tiny segment of Catholics. What moral standards were demonstrated during that time? What moral standards have ever been demonstrated throughout our history? Um, the raping, the pillaging, the killing of the native people by the Protestants? Did they go along with those moral standards? Was that a demonstration of morality to you? Did they go along with this? No, of course not. Um, instead, they behaved with uh, that Aleister Crowley do as thou wilt philosophy, calling themselves Christians. You know, is stealing land and lying and betraying agreements, stealing children from their parents, forcing them into Christian schools, beating, torturing, raping, killing them, was that a demonstration of the morality that everybody agreed to go along with? And that's, well, it is how our country worked. But I think when you say that's how our country worked, um, suggesting in there that it worked differently than it is working now. But you still have a huge majority of Christians now. You know, you have been the majority throughout our entire history. You have actually been, up until recent years, over 90% of the population. What happened? Slavery? Was that moral? Raping black women, uh, hanging black men from trees, unleashing dogs upon them, uh, the black protesters during the 60s, they marching in a dignified fashion simply to have those inalienable rights that you mentioned the founders drafted that document, the Declaration of Independence, and they saying those inalienable rights came from our Creator that you define as the biblical God. That's your definition of Creator. So what happened then? Right on up to today, you still have Christians living a satanic life, claiming they're Christian, and it's the majority of Christians who are keeping this evil system, satanic system, going. They're getting their income from evil corporations, the government. Um, they won't give it up because that, well, that's asking a little bit too much. They claim to be Christian. But it really is in name only. They live a life that is essentially an antichrist life while calling themselves Christian. So, yeah, I have a little bit of a problem when you have a majority of Christians who really are living in a way that is so unchristlike, but their belief is strong. And 
Well, that's all they think they need. So they've got a belief. Where's the practice? Hmm, not so much. So a whole lot of this evil that we are living today manifested by Christians. They not adhering to those moral standards. You know, a lot of Christians claim got to get prayer back in school and get those Ten Commandments back in government buildings. Really? So you need something that will bring morality, Christian morality back? You never had it. As a group, collectively, never had it. Whether you had a plaque in the government office or prayer was in school. It never manifested. And you know what really upsets me? Is that considering, considering that up until recent years, you were essentially our population here. That if there was even a majority of the majority that lived the principles that they speak, this country could have been extraordinary. But it never was, and it still is not, even though you still have a huge majority. So something is very wrong with the Christian community. And that needs to be faced. Before, before you start claiming that your God is the only authority on moral standards. Um, you know, there's a lot of controversy about the Bible. Oh, I know, it's sacrilege to even bring it up. There's a lot of research that has been done by scholars showing that the Bible, Roman propaganda, a lot of evidence that no Jesus existed, a lot of evidence that points to the fact, the fact that the Gospels were written for the um, Roman Empire to introduce this pacifist Jew to suppress the Jewish rebellions. Now I can't remember an awful lot. A gospel, gospel, um, what does that mean? Is it Evangelion, I think? What does that mean? It means um, Oh, victory. Oh, I can't remember. Hang on. Good news of military victory. That's what the translation means. Good news of military victory. Roman propaganda. And When you even try to have this conversation with a Christian, you can't. You can't. Because they won't even go there. Um, the belief that the Bible is the Word of God, men writing it, but those men were, I guess, chosen by God and inspired by God, it's a belief. That's it. So there's an awful lot of Christians who claim they have the truth, they own the truth, but that's their manufacturing their own mental manufacturing of 
these ideas that help them sustain their belief. Um, you know, unless someone has the ability, the courage to face their own self, then they will never, they'll be the lost puppy. The most important truth is the truth about yourself, which requires reevaluating those beliefs that you hold, determining where those beliefs came from, doing that hard self reflection, that self examination that allows one to develop greater awareness of their own self in the world. It allows one to make deliberate decisions regarding their behavior. It allows one to make a deliberate decision on how they want to live. Oh, it takes an awful long time, but it is the only way to get to that narrow road. You know, it's interesting to me that when I have posted videos just asking, you know, Christians, how is it possible that the Bible actually states lying is an abomination? When so many of you lie, you never give it up. You just continue lying. What is going on here? Every Christian that I have had in my life, a, a close relationship, I'm not talking about everyone that I've known, has lied. They lie. They cause a lot of drama. They cause a lot of uh, hurt. They cause an awful lot of betrayal of trust. They don't care. They don't even admit it they continue doing it. That's how they live. Dare to mention that hey, it's kind of not Christ-like what you're doing here and that Bible says lying is an abomination. Oh, they're the Christians that uh, they select out the passages in that Bible that work for them and ignore the other ones that don't. These are not Christians. Oh, they slap that label on themselves, but they're not Christian. And unfortunately, it is a majority of Christians, and the majority has made a farce of Christianity. And all of you should be upset about that if you're not part of that majority making Christianity a farce. Now, I don't and I've said this, I don't care if Jesus is a myth or real. I have stated that I have used Jesus as an example. I have stated that I have had many, many long conversations with Jesus. I do not have the experience that a lot of people have. Uh, my experience differs. You know, I didn't get to that place where, oh, I'm feeling the solace of a lot of Christians or uh, feeling like Jesus is with me or God is with me. Does that mean that I've given up my spiritual practice and thrown away my moral standards of knowing what is right and wrong? No, not my subjective standards, objective standards right action does not cause harm to anyone wrong action does so um and yes this idea of perfection it, that's a given okay because very often i get people saying people aren't perfect I, okay got that but you keep trying. When I've posted those videos on 
Lying is an abomination, so what's going on here? What do I get? Well, we're all sinners. Yeah, but Jesus said, I'll forgive you of your sins. Go and sin no more. Which means that the individual Christian needs to work on their behavior so that they sin no more. Well, I have yet to meet one in real life that bothers to even seriously consider that part of the Bible. So, sorry, um, Christians, you may have a Bible, you may have a belief, but the moral behavior is lacking greatly. And yes, it is upsetting because you have people coming at you with their beliefs all the time. Hey, I'm superior because I'm a Christian. The arrogance is thick. They don't demonstrate in life their spiritual practice. They just have that belief. Oh, they pray. Many pray because oh, they want to feel better. Now, everything is about the self, not about Jesus. Everything is about protecting their ego. They, they, the, their ego trumps Jesus. Their delusion trumps Jesus. Um, the other passage, you know, I, and I can't speak it verbatim, but what, <laughs> what does Jesus say to those who are, but I've always, always calling your name. Go, I don't know you. Try to have a conversation with a Christian on that passage. Nope. The narrow road. Nope. You're all on it. You're all getting into heaven. These delusional beliefs are 100% contributing to the great evil that we are being saturated in that is destroying an awful lot of life. So you can, you know, um, you can have your beliefs and, you know, I, I have known that we have always, um, uh, I think, well, I'll speak for myself. I have always respected you. I don't share your beliefs, but that didn't mean that I had to unsubscribe or not listen to you, not listen to you or um, demand that you have my belief, demand that you go in accordance with, well, I don't have a Bible, but Christians do that. I've had many Jews in my life. I've had Muslim friends. It's only the Christians that impose their beliefs. You've got to believe what I believe because I have the truth. No, you don't. You have your belief. That's it. So, unless the Christian community really face the evil within it, you're just going to be manifesting more and more evil, pretending it's not happening from Christians. You're going to be blaming everybody else but Christians. Great. We'll get far with that. So, um, no, I am not believing that I'm a god, that I have the authority, that I'm this, that I'm that. Not at all. I do believe that life, man, is quite a trip, and it is fascinating, and wow, something extraordinary. Do I believe that there is a power far greater than myself? 
You can bet that I do. Do I submit to something higher than myself? I absolutely do. Is it the God in the Bible? No. Is it your God? No. Do I call it God? Yes. Do I know what that God is? No. No, that's the great mystery. The big, big questions that can't be answered by anybody, not even Christians. So I I've had my ego pummeled out of me, not saying that I have none, but I have for many years submitted to truth. And you know what? If a Christian doesn't do that, then they ain't on that narrow road because that is the only, the only practice, practice, not belief, that can put you on that narrow road. Truth. Truth. And the practice is living honestly, speaking honestly, and behaving in a manner where you are not causing harm to any other life. Sentient being, I'm going to go further to life. We don't have that right. Oh, but many feel they do. So that was the best that I could give you. Um, that's my answer. And I'm sorry, in truth by grace, but you don't have the right to impose your God on me. Um, but isn't it interesting that we came to the same end point? So, coming to that end point of recognizing that this is not right for children, I said in my video, you introduce children and look at the children. You can tell, you know, you don't even have to look at their face. You can tell these children are so young, but two, three, four, five year olds are being brought to these story times. You're introducing them to the adult world of drag queens. We're living at a time of the internet. These children have iPhones and iPads and, and that introduction leads them the very next day they're putting in the search bar as drag queen and boom they're saturated into an adult adult entertainment transgenderism homosexuality heterosexuality any kind of sexuality kindergarten first grade you don't need to go to the bible to know that that is wrong Just looking at that, you know, my video was based on Annie Christ in Philadelphia or uh, Pennsylvania somewhere, but this picture is from two years ago, a drag queen in L.A. If I could imagine myself as a child sitting there, that would scare the hell out of me and I would probably have nightmares looking at that. You know, these drag queens dress, you know, as if the, the exaggeration, the heavy load of makeup and the hair that goes three feet up and, and all of it. it it's like you, you're going to sit down, a three-year-old, a four-year-old, in front of that, and they're not going to be like in their mind, uh, what is that? It confuses them. I 
And yes, in truth by grace, I absolutely believe it is necessary for each and every one of us to call out what is wrong and to God applaud what is right because we see very little of what is right. We are relational beings. We learn from one another. If, if one does not give themselves the authority to speak on what is wrong, then wrong will just continue to spread as it has been spreading. Anyway, um, you still have my respect. I don't want you to think that I was um, in any way um, disrespectful, certainly. We both are rather passionate when we are speaking. So we know that. And I really don't. Share your beliefs. That's it. Um, there's so much evidence that points to that Bible not being the Word of God. Now, that doesn't stop me from using Jesus as an example. I do believe that that's the point. It's the point that everybody should be focused on. You call yourself a Christian, then Jesus is the example for you to follow. Not just to believe in, but to follow. To incorporate uh, that Christ consciousness, oh, dare I say consciousness, oh, you're all new age. No, uh, there's nothing new age about me. Nothing. You know, you dare to say natural law. Oh, you're a Darwinist. Are you kidding me? The, the insanity idiocy of the Christian community is, wow, it's out there and you do get worn down. And I'm worn down. I'm really tired. I don't care anymore. Uh, what you think of me your anger, hostility, your insults, go for it. But all you're proving is that you're not. You're a Christian in name only. That's it. And when you do have these hardened beliefs, you don't really know how to listen to somebody who doesn't share your beliefs. That's too bad. You know, they're to be annihilated if they can't come into the fold. Well, whatever, you know. I don't know what to say about that, but I have spoken passionately, passion, passionately on this subject because I so want. Because you are the huge majority. And my God, if you stopped, if you stop catering to this satanic system and started living, trying every single day to live a Christ-like life, things could radically change. But until that happens, sorry, the Christian community is a big, big, big factor in the evil that is really now running rampant all over. I know you don't like hearing that, but all you have to do is look at the obvious. Have a good day. Should I say that? <laughs> you still have my respect.
Nothing has changed then.